John was the guy that first gave Dick a ride in, in a car. Uh, Dick had had his own car. He briefly retired. John called him up and, well, the rest, the rest the is history. I'm a mechanic. Yep. And he was running a parts store for Apple Auto. So I knew him from Apple Auto days. And I'd go to the racetrack. I used to help out uh, Steve Halpenny. And uh, him and I, we kind of split up. And I got the inclination with a couple other guys to start a race team. So we did. And we had Kenny. Was he sportsman? Sportsman. And one of the other owners with me, uh, some relative of his is Kenny Shear. And Kenny had retired, and we said, well, let's bring him back and let's get us going. So Kenny ran a month or two for us and then went on vacation. So Del Seekins and myself, we got to think, well, little Kenny used to drive, or, you know, Dick used to drive. And he retired. I said, I'm going to give him a call. So uh, he had bought a house up in the lake and was living up on the lake. And I said, I'd like to drive for a couple of weeks. He said, yeah, no problem. Help you guys out. And he was out and he did very successful with it. And so as a, the other, the race team 14 or, got together and we decided, you know, it's not the best interest of us to keep Kenny as a driver. Let's see if we can talk Dick into full time. And Dick said, fine. I said, you don't have to work on it. You don't have to do nothing but drive the race car. And that was right up his alley because he was all worked out. And that's how it all started. Should have been 1981 time period? Yeah. Yeah. Then we ran Sportsman for three years. And they were abolishing that class. And they come to the end of the season. I had a few... Uh, Beverages in myself and <laughs> Jim Greenwall, who was just in here, he uh, they blew his motor up in his late model. Well, I had a brainstorm. I said, "Well, let's take my motor out of my car, and we'll I'll talk. I'll go meet him Sunday morning." I didn't know him. I knew him, but I didn't know him. You know, uh, I went down and talked to him, met up for coffee, and I said, "How about we take our motor, put it in your car, and have Dick drive it?" And he was all for it, and here we are today. How many championships and track victories, and it was phenomenal. So you took a sportsman's car motor, put it in a late model chassis, which Jim owned. Yep. Your motor, his chassis, mm -hmm. and uh, Dick drove it. Yep. And that was the beginning of the late model world. That was the beginning, yeah. First night out, we, uh, we uh, led most of the race, and the uh, last lap, Jimmy Polaro beat us. That's one of the few races Jimmy won, so he must have been happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, we, and then from then on, he was hooked, I was hooked, and that, that's it. Let's, uh, let's head to Pensboro, baby. <laughs> 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 who was on the team? I see the race team 14. Who consisted of that? That was myself, Del Seekings. And Gary Zepka. You would you would set up the car during the week. Mm -hmm. Yep. And would Dick show up, or was he more or less just the? Oh, <laughs> he showed up at the racetrack, yeah. like he does, or like he did. And, yeah. so, and really, just uh, so if you had to adjust, it was really Dick's observations on the track. Right. I left in '88, maybe '89, somewhere in that neighborhood. His competitiveness, and he was very easy on equipment. He would bring it back in one piece. And, he's, you know, I don't care if it's him playing racquetball or whatever he does. If it's not winning, he's not happy. Yeah. There was one particular one at Erie, and in the opening lap, we had a flat. We came in the pits, changed the tires, started dead last, and went out and won the feature in 25 laps. And then it just, so I've never forgot that. Was there, was there a driver or two that you just said, geez, I hope we don't bang into him? Yeah. Um, Billy Southwell's team and Dave Turner, 
They were the, they were the feisty ones back in the days. It was a lot of fun. You know, back in them days, um, it didn't cost a quarter million dollars to go racing. You know, three guys, we put our funds together and we could go out and be competitive and, and win races and enjoy yourself. You still had money for a beer at the end of the night. You know, and <laughs> nowadays, oh my God, I mean, you could win every race and not pay for it, you know. Did you guys, after a race, what did you guys do? Drink a lot of beer. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that from other guys. Yeah. Uh, Craig Briggs was involved then. A lot of times we'd go down to his place in Sugar Grove, come back wee hours in the morning, get up, work on a car, go to Erie. Then we started working three or racing three nights a week. And that was really that haul from Lernerville back. You get back three o'clock in the morning. You're up at eight, washing the car down a robo wash, back to the garage. Overhaul it, go to the state line, and over again for Erie. Monday night's the only night I took off from the racing for years. Yeah, been a lot of fun with the guys. Well, thank you. Sure. J Dub. Yep. Okay. So I got I got the old Dick out of the woodwork. He retired, and I was the instigator. So I, congratulations. Yeah. And now you can enjoy the fruits of his labor. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah, thank you.